pineapple cake. Simple, timeless, delicious in just about every shape and form that it comes in. It's something eaten, beloved, and made in various parts of the world with very humble but very delicious ingredients. I've shared various kinds of apple recipes with you guys here on the channel and also on my blog, Maverick Baking, where you can find any recipes that you don't find here, as well as the ones that you do find here, but you know. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that I'm not always willing to share more of them with you. If you are new to the channel, my name is Kelly and here we share recipes like today's one. We also share kind of foodie vlogs, what I eat in a day's food challenges, all sorts of things. So if you haven't already, do feel free to tap that subscribe button. Today, I want to share with you a kind of apple cake and apple crumble combined into something tasty, delicious and a bit grown up thanks to some booze. <laughs> a simple, soft, and super easy apple cake with spices like cinnamon and ginger, a lovely cozy and rich flavor from a bit of brown sugar, some beautifully soft sweet apples on top, a little bit of dark rum through there, and a crunchy, cinnamony, crumbly, sweet oat crumble topping. This is what you want in either a nice bit of cake to have with a cup of tea or as a dessert eaten warm. I promise. Though it has a few different steps and will require a little bit of time in the oven, this recipe is super easy even if you're a beginner baker. It's one that you can make with everyday ingredients and with or without the rum. But I hope you love it as much as we have. Let's get into it. Our apple cake gladly begins with some butter. Ideally at room temperature, mine had been cold from the fridge so I warmed it up a little bit, hence a little bit of the goop. But anything around room temperature will just make your life easier and the cake better. To that, you're going to add some brown sugar. Ideally, the darker the better, both for texture and flavor, and a little splodge of vanilla extract, vanilla bean paste, whatever your budget allows for. And you're just going to want to beat them up. Just let out all of the week's stresses on it until it's looking lighter and fluffier like this. To that, you're going to add just one whole large egg and then use a bit more violence. You're just going to want to beat that in until it's incorporated. Don't worry if at this point it starts to look lumpy. It's no big deal. It will come together with the dry ingredients. Being flour, baking powder, bicarbonate of soda, some ground ginger, some ground cinnamon, and of course, a generous pinch of salt. And before we mix that up again, we're going to add a couple of glugs of rum. Ideally, the dark stuff or the spiced stuff, whatever you have handy. I use this kind that we got as a gift. Of course, if you're not into alcohol or if you don't have any, this will taste just good without it. It's just a little boost. And you're just going to want to fold those in until you have this nice, thick, but smooth cake mixture. Set it aside for just a second while you prepare your apple or apples. If you decide to make a kind of double of this recipe, which you're more than welcome to, you'll probably need kind of two regular or one large apple. I just use this pretty small one for this kind of smaller version of the cake and it did absolutely fine. Just kind of get rid of the skin and of the core or, you know, chew into it. I've seen someone eat a whole apple once. I still haven't fully recovered from it. But if you do that, you know, you do that. It's your kitchen. Slice it super, super thinly, ideally into these little kind of moon-shaped things. I think they're very pretty. And you're then going to set that aside to quickly throw together the crumble which we make with rolled oats, a little bit of flour, about the same weight as the oats. We're then going to add just a bit more of that lovely brown sugar, a generous pinch of salt, of course, and to bring it all together, oh, well, of course, to add some flavor, some cinnamon, and to bring it all together, either some melted butter or some kind of nice tasting olive oil, if you have it. Give it a stir or use your hands just to bring it together into a nice kind of chunky, oaty, crumbly looking stuff. And then you're going to want to grab your cake tin. I used a little small kind of six inch one, just greased with some butter with a little bit of greaseproof paper underneath. And I just plopped all of that lovely cake mixture in there, spread it around, and then fanned out those lovely apple slices. Though you can throw them on however you like, really, because the crumble will be covering them for the most part anyway. <laughs> just use your hands to kind of crumble over and throw that crumble on top until it looks something like this. Then pop it in the oven for about 25 to 35 minutes, depending on your oven and, of course, on your cake. And it should come out looking something like this. Of course, if you've made the kind of smaller version of the recipe that's in the description or the bigger one, it might come out looking like this, almost single layer, or it might come out taller and fluffier, whichever you decide to do. And once the cake is nice and cool, you can either serve it at room temperature or serve it cold as a kind of tea time or snack 
like cake or breakfast if you like, or serve it warm or still hot with some cold cream, some warm custard, even a little bit of caramel sauce or something like that. It's really kind of versatile. It's lovely and cozy in its flavors while still being kind of nice and light. I love this cake. I love its coziness. I love its warmth. I love the spices and I hope you guys love it too.